Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and there's an information overload today. I want to start with this from the official cool guy of the Digital Asset Investor channel. <laughs> He's got one of the one of the better lines that I saw in all these documents, which is on the Hinman emails, um, the Brett Redfern said told Bill Hinman, uh, if you want to just uh, if you want to say Ethereum is not a security, just say it. And he added the Nike swoosh. Now one of the more in, one of the better finds that I've seen today is this right here from the official cowboy of the Digital Asset Investor Channel. We got all kinds of titles here, um, and this was an email from William Hinman on June fourth. It's something simple, but it's significant to me. Subject: Ether speech. In other words, the whole speech was designed to give Ether a free pass. That was the whole point of the speech. We'll, we'll get to that more because John Deaton keeps saying, why did they give the speech? Well, this morning, and I, have, I had actually tweeted out that I wanted some cliff notes of all this because there's thousands of documents. And Ripple was ready. Stuart Alderati put out this video and a long tweet. I'm not going to go through his whole tweet. The video is good enough. I'm going to play all minutes, all four minutes and 38 seconds because it is great. Watch this. On June 14, 2018, then SEC Director of Corporation Finance William Hinman gave a high profile speech where he declared that a token is not a security when it becomes, quote, sufficiently decentralized. But internal emails and documents show that senior SEC officials repeatedly warned Hinman that his speech wasn't true to the law and would greatly confuse the markets even more than they already were. Now, after more than two years and seven court orders, we can finally share some of what we found in the Hinman speech documents. The SEC head of trading and markets warned Hinman that he was making up factors that, quote, go beyond the typical Howey analysis, as in not in the law, and that the speech could lead to not just confusion, but greater confusion on what is a security. Hinman ignored him. If the network on which the token or coin is the function is sufficiently decentralized and the purchasers no longer have a reasonable expectation that a person or a group is going to carry out essential managerial or entrepreneurial efforts, those assets might not represent an investment contract. The same official told Hinman he should tie his speech, quote, more closely and explicitly to the Howey analysis. Hinman not only ignored him, but and deliberately created... By the way, the reason that they're telling him that is because you can't just go out and give a speech and all of a sudden there's a new test or there's an add-on to the Howey test. It requires the courts. They can't do that. And so why did he do it? Just beyond those identified by the Supreme Court in the Howey case. I wanted to just note a few things. This list is not meant to be exhaustive, but these are things that we look at. The SEC's own general counsel warned specifically that it's legally irrelevant if someone retains a stake in a token and is motivated to take action to increase its value, and that Hinman should delete it from the speech. And once again, Hinman ignored them, and said without any legal support that it was important to ask. Has that person or group retained a stake in, or other interests in the digital asset such that it would be motivated to expend efforts to cause an increase in the value of the digital asset? Both Trading and Markets and the General Counsel also disagreed with Hinman's belief that if a network was sufficiently decentralized, information asymmetries would no longer exist, noting that a network creator would likely have more information than a retail holder, using Vitalik Buterin as an example. They warned Hinman that by creating this, quote, other category and focusing on information asymmetries, he was exposing a regulatory gap that the SEC may not have the jurisdiction to fill. Again, Hinman ignored them. As the network becomes more truly decentralized, the ability to even to identify a promoter or to make the requisite and someone that could actually make the requisite disclosures becomes in many cases difficult or um, and perhaps much less meaningful. On June 4th, Hinman wrote that he didn't see a quote, need to regulate Ether as a security and set up a call with Ethereum's co-founder Vitalik Buterin later that week to quote, confirm our understanding. 
On June 11th, the SEC's own general counsel advised against including any direct statement about Ether in the speech because it would be difficult for the SEC to, quote, take a different position on Ether in the future. The next day, Trading and Markets wrote that the statements about Ether were, quote, likely to create more confusion. Hinman ignored all of them and decided to make headlines, picking winners and losers instead. Moreover, putting aside the fundraising that accompanied the creation of Ether, Based on my understanding, putting aside the fact that you just robbed a bank, uh, you are now no longer a bank robber because I, Bill Hinman, said so. The present state of Ether, the Ethereum network, its decentralized structure, we believe current offers and sales of Ether are not securities transactions. The emails show that Hinman knew he wasn't following the law. He knew he was making things up. And he knew that his speech would result in greater confusion in an already confused market. But Hinman went ahead with the speech anyway. And the SEC, despite knowing all this, touted the speech repeatedly. The SEC chairman himself pointed market participants to the speech. Bill Hinman recently outlined the approach we take to evaluate whether a digital asset is a security. And I encourage you to take a look at Bill's speech which is available on our website. The SEC knew the speech didn't follow the law. The SEC knew the speech would create greater confusion. And the SEC knew Hinman was making things up. So why is the Hinman speech still on the SEC's website? Why was it ever allowed to be given at all? And why has the SEC pushed a policy of regulation by enforcement, falsely insisting the rules are clear? Exactly. Now, John Deaton retweeted this, and he said something very important. From Ripple's general counsel, he's taking the high road, in my opinion. It's time to ask for an IG inspection at a minimum. And he's asking Congress. Um, this, this is something that uh, the, uh, the IG, the uh, internal, what do they call it? Anyway, at the SEC... My understanding is that if 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 the if Congress asks for this, all of a sudden, I think I want to say that I heard it that that could that then um, John Deaton or I don't know if he could or somebody would be able to get some subpoena power if they could get subpoena subpoena power. Now remember, see this stuff's one thing, but I believe that there was a lot more communications going on. Remember, Bill Hinman was. Um, Council, we've seen the the screenshots of his Gmail account, account on a list of people who were were working with. I can't remember. If it, I think it was the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance or the or the Brooklyn Project. It was one of those, and he was one of the advisors behind the scenes. And I think that that's where the those emails. If they order an IG inspection, then those emails could be gotten to. Subpoenas could fly. Then it could get really interesting because I believe there's all kinds of stuff. So what I did to help John along is I copied every sen I, have, I have a list of all the senators' Twitter uh, accounts. or It's an old list. I need to update it. But I copied them all in so that they could see this video and see his request. Now... I also did this because Charles Charles Payne is is getting Warren Davidson on his show on his show today at 2 p.m. on Fox Business because Warren Davidson is is doing the SEC Stabilization Act to restructure the SEC and fire Gary Gensler. So I said, Charles, ask Warren Davidson why he hasn't asked for an IG inspection at the SEC yet because that's what that is what we need. Um, then Brad Garlinghouse tweeted the Ripple video, and he says it's absolutely unconscionable that a regulator, when presented with so much pushback on what was about to say, how he compiled his fake test, exactly, fake test, in the first place decided to move forward anyway and throw an entire industry into chaos by design. For the SEC to sue Chris Larson and me personally for allegedly selling unregistered securities when their own division had deliberately created confusion that 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 this, well, I don't have, have a single polite word to describe this deplorable, politically motivated overreach. Seeing the depth to which the SEC has essentially weaponized the lack of regular, regulatory clarity through enforcement actions 
Since this speech was given, it's no, no surprise that we can call bluff on their claims to just come in and register as nothing uh, but, but in bad faith. Then we had, um, and I had a question, how much of that $200 million Ripple spent was wasted on proving Bill Hinman and, and the SEC were lying about the Ethereum free pass speech? Who pays them back? Now, then we had this, Charles Gasparino is coming out of left field here, folks. Fascinating stuff. I know the knee jerk react. The knee jerk from the XRP community will be this proves a fraud. It doesn't. It prove it does prove Hester Pierce argument. We need a safe harbor in crypto. We need to stop regulation by enforcement, and Congress needs to set digital coin ground rules now. Brad Garlinghouse took issue with it. I won't use the fraud word. I'm not a lawyer, and I don't know the precise legal threshold. But I think we can all agree that our government should act with integrity. The SEC, despite the industry asking for clarity, is actively approaching crypto in bad faith. And Gasparino says, I don't know about bad faith. Man, I have to disagree there. Bad faith is very clear. These are bureaucrats working in a bureaucracy trying to regulate something totally foreign to its mission. Congress needs to step in, step in ASAP. And Brad Garlinghouse says, foreign to its mission, their mission literally starts protect investors. How is that happening here? It's absolutely bad faith, evidenced by the fact that the exact investors they purport to protect are trying to sue them. And he copies John Deaton in. True story. Then we've got the cool guy who is an attorney weighing in. He makes some good points. Listen to this. What's up, fam? We got the Hinman emails, and while it's still early, I'm going to wait for the sleuths to keep digesting it while I walk through the boogie down Bronx. But Mr. I's key takeaways, number one, the SEC knew that this would create confusion, and they continued it so they can create wiggle room, so they can keep dipping their toes in this industry. That's not how America works. You don't trick people into breaking the law. Number two, you had an ex-JP Morgan guy just tell Billy Boy, just say it. It doesn't get more blunt than that. And number three, no need for the Supreme Court. No need for the Howey test. Billy Boy Hinman is the only Supreme Court judge in America, and he makes the test that he wants, the Hinman test. Now, What's folks, up, fam? that last point he made, uh, Judge Hinman making tests, the point he's making there is that Bill Hinman, they even referred to it, one of the lawyers reviewing the thing referred to it as Hinman's new test. But Hinman and all the attorneys know that Hinman can't create a new test and he can't create an add-on to the Howey test. Only the courts can do that. So they all knew that what he was creating was BS. They all knew it. And so the, 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 the issue here is why did he give the speech? John Deaton keeps saying it. The only reason, the only possible reason he could have given the speech where he's creating a fake test that he knows is fake and telegraphing it to the market is to manipulate the market in favor of Ethereum and Bitcoin because he mentioned it in the speech too. That's the only reason he could have made, the only reason to make the speech. And that is what everybody knows and some people like Gasparino don't want to acknowledge. Um, and I said, hey, Squawk Box, Andrew Ross Sorkin, Becky Quick, Joe, Joe Kernan, where's your coverage of the Hinman documents released showing SEC corruption? Where's your Jay Clayton interview? He was everywhere last week. Truth is a fascinating thing. It gets tons of views when the people know they're being lied to. You should try it sometime. Library weighs in. Really regretting that we didn't bribe the SEC like Ethereum did. If you if you get a chance to bribe government officials, please do it. It's worth every penny. This is com a completely serious tweet, by the way. Cryptocurrency in the U.S. Uh, in the U.S. actually would be in an even worse place without the ETH SEC corruption. <laughs> I mean, God. And then uh, this guy says, could this tweet be uh, by Brad Garlinghouse actually be referring to a settlement um, and not about the Hinman emails? And then Brad Garlinghouse replies to him, no. And the cool guy says, answering no in regard to that tweet, but are you telling me there's a chance? <laughs> uh, good stuff. And then Ashley Prosper comes in. My last Ripple case ends watch date approaches. Her last watch date was June 21st. We shall see. 
And I'm going to finish with uh, Tim Draper. Haven't seen him in a while. He went on Fox Business to talk about how weak of a regulator Gary Gensler is. Listen to what he says. Billionaire <laughs> Venture Capital Royalty. Draper Associates founder Tim Draper. Hucksters, scam artists. I mean, that, it's like that scene in Woody Allen's Bananas where the cop gets up on this, onto the witness stand and says, he's a New York commie intellectual bad apple, but I don't want to cast no aspersions or nothing. Uh, what do you make of his, his comments here? You know, um, weak regulators spread fear and strong regulators uh, spread opportunity. And uh, I think we've got a real problem because the SEC has been spreading fear and all of the innovators are leaving the country. And there's a huge problem we have. This regulation by enforcement makes no sense. We want the great, technology to, great technologies to stay in the US. And they're all going to Dubai and Singapore and Northern Europe and south america and all over the world and that they're they're all saying oh it's all about the howey test the howey test was 80 years ago and it, it has no relevance to crypto i think crypto needs to be regulated in a new way from a new group you got that right I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that Tim Draper is right. Why, why, why would any regulator want to drive, drive innovation out of our country? Unless you're working for another country. I mean, we do, after all, we do have a president that's being accused of being compromised by China, and that's that's who Gary Gensler is getting his 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 choke point two point o orders from, isn't it? Maybe that needs to be looked into a little further.